I come to worship God today. I will speak and I'll sing His praise. I will magnify the Lord forever. Let's exalt His name together. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond Where the saved of our shall soon the glory share Share the Lord and where the souls of men shall enter And live on forever And everybody will be happy Lord, let's praise the Lord Cause everybody will to know that we will be Oh, 
Ta te Come to you this morning with the morning prayer for the morning service. Father, we come to you with bow here and humble heart to give you thanks for a multitude of blessings you bless us with from here in our lives until this prayer moment. Father, we want to thank you for watching over us last night as we slumber and slept. Father, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning with a portion of our health and strength and all that we touch. Father, we want to say a special prayer for the bereaving family that had, had people that died of COVID. Father, we just want to say thank you, Father. Father, you know what they're going through, and you're the one that can help them and get them through this time and period. Father, we want to say a special word for the preachers to be sure to stand before you, breaking us the bread of life. Father, this be enough in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Once again to our Sunday morning worship here at the Maple Avenue Church of Christ. We thank you so very much for tuning in and worshiping with us from wherever you happen to be. Help me this morning if you would. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us, let us, let us exalt his name together. This morning, the passage chosen for our examination comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 6. We'll begin reading at verse number six and read through and including verse number 16. And if you go there, you will find these words. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live for heaven. All the presidents of the kingdoms, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. And when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his, his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or man within 30 days save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. 
and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. Then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. I want to use that passage as a foundation for our subject this morning. What are you going to do when you're in trouble? What are you going to do when you are in trouble? trouble. It's an undeniable fact that all here has at one time or another been in trouble. Trouble may not have been of your own making, but you found yourself in trouble nonetheless. It is also a certainty that you will again find yourself in trouble. Only God knows when, where, and how much. So since the question is when and not if, you need to decide beforehand what you're going to do when you're in trouble. Now, the background of this passage is, is one that is filled with exhibitions of the power of God, the providence of God, the mercy of God, the deliverance of God, and the awesome revelation of God. Sinful King Darius was tricked into signing a decree against the prayer to any man or God except him for 30 days. Jealousy motivated it and pride agreed to. It. Why did they choose 30 days? Well, not forever. They knew Daniel prayed regularly. They could have made the decree for a week and the result would have been the same. They must have thought that he would put prayer on hold because of the decree. But they knew he couldn't go a whole month without praying to the creator of heaven and earth. Now, the king had appointed princes over the various provinces to manage the kingdom. And he had three presidents over the princes. And Daniel, a Hebrew captain, was made one of the presidents and they were angry and offended at the king's actions. Look at Daniel chapter 6 verse 4 and 5. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom but they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. They tried to look at Daniel's job performance and see if he broke any laws of their kingdom and see if he was doing a good job in his position, but they found nothing against him. And so they said, the only way that we're going to be able to get Daniel is if we find something connected with his God. They wanted to destroy him, and they couldn't. And they knew if there was a constant, if there was a certainty, it was Daniel's devotion to the law of his God. Be careful when you plot against the man of God. These men didn't know they were not only attacking Daniel, but they were also attacking Jehovah. They knew Daniel was a praying man and chose to attack him where they knew he would be and that's down on his knees. Folk, there are jealous people in the world and they don't even need a good reason to try to destroy you. You don't even have to know that they're jealous for them to come after you. I don't know if Daniel knew it was a plot against him, but it didn't matter. 
He may not have known what they were going to do, but Daniel knew what he was going to do. So the question on the floor today is, what are you going to do when you get in trouble? When you're attacked, do you already know what you're going to do? What will you do while you wonder why this is happening? What will you do while you wonder what caused this attack? My answer for step number one is pray before the trouble and you can pray in the trouble. Prayer is always appropriate. No matter if you're guilty or innocent, prayer is always appropriate. Whether you know the reason or you're still in the dark about the reason for the problem, prayer is still appropriate. Whether that plot works or not, Prayer is still appropriate. Prayer is so critical to the life of a child of God that Peter requested and required that those baptized on the day of Pentecost just got in the, in the water. Continue in prayer. Acts 2, 41 and 42. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Peter later writes in 1 Peter 3, 12, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Pray without ceasing. When you're up or when you're down, pray. When you're sick or when you're well, pray. When you're succeeding or failing, helping or in need of help, hungry or full, going out or coming in, getting up or laying down, very sure or very confused, will you to pray? When you're on a mountaintop or you're in the valley low, whether you liked or hated, respected or ridiculed, answered or ignored, chosen or rejected in every situation, prayer is always appropriate. Daniel knew he would pray, no matter what the consequence, because he was a praying man. The text tells us that when he knew the decree was signed, he went inside and prayed like he always did. I wonder what Daniel prayed about. Did he pray that the villains would change their minds? Did he pray he wouldn't get caught? Or did he just say, thy will be done? What would you pray for? We don't face physical lions today, but we are vulnerable. We don't serve the king of the land with others jealous of our authority, but there are those who want what we have and hate us for what we can do. Jealousy did not die. Hatred did not die. Underhanded, conniving, and backroom plots did not die. Slander did not die. Lying did not die. If you develop a prayer life before the trouble, you'll have a prayer ready when the trouble comes. What you gonna do when you get in trouble? I'm going to pray like I always did. I maintain that we ought to pray for the strength to survive. I don't need a lion's den strength because I'm not facing lion's dens, but I still need strength. My life is not being threatened, but I still need strength. I'm not breaking the law when I pray, but I still need strength because I never know enough I never have enough. I can never do enough. I'm never strong enough. So I always need more strength. So Lord, please help me to grow stronger. I might make a mistake. So I need some strength. I'm constantly tempted, tested, and tried. So I need strength. I can't draw on the strength I had yesterday. I need a fresh batch today. I may have been strong then, but I need to be stronger now. So I maintain we are released. Pray for strength. If you pray before the trouble comes, you'll be ready to pray when you're in trouble. 
Next thing you need to do is to trust God before the trouble for deliverance from the trouble. The king knew that God would deliver Daniel. Daniel knew that God would deliver him. I want to do you know that God will deliver you. Do the folk who know you know where you stand? The king knew where Daniel stood. Folk around you ought to know where you stand. Even if they don't like where you stand, they need to know where you stand. It's been well said, he who stands for nothing will fall for anything. The same Daniel was captured right along with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He shared the same confidence that they would allow him to say, if, it, if, if, if chapter 3, verse 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. We know God is able. We see the furnace is right there. But one thing for sure, God is going to deliver us out of your hand. They came in together. They learned, they grew together. When they were taken captive, it no doubt brought them closer. And see, when you hang with folk who have been delivered, it reinforces your faith. You know Daniel heard about those boys facing the furnace. That was back in chapter 3. Now he's about to face the lions in chapter 6. You know he's remembering God delivered them in the furnace. So I know he's going to deliver me. See, you hang around with negative folk and you too begin to become negative. Hang around with somebody always without hope and pretty soon your hope will begin to fade. But if you hang around folk with a mission, pretty soon you'll have a mission. Hang around somebody who believes in deliverance of God and you too will find yourself looking for God's deliverance. You need to know that today you're in the presence of some delivered folk. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 1, 9, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but God which raised the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust, he will yet deliver us. Daniel trusted God to deliver him before the lions and he trusted God to deliver him when he was thrown in the lion's den. I'm here to tell you this morning that when your trouble comes, you need to already have some trust in a delivering God. I'm trusting in God to deliver me from every adverse situation I face because the scripture is clear. When you align yourself with God and Christ, things won't stay the same. Look at the record. When folk met Jesus, things changed. If you met him when you were blind, you went home looking. If you met him, if he met you when you were dead, you went home living. You met home when, when, you, were le when you were lame, you went home leaping. God changes things. Trouble takes on many forms, but the answer is the same. Trust in God for your deliverance. Trouble always seems to come at the worst time. But the answer is the same. Sometimes you're in trouble and sometimes you're in big trouble. But the answer is the same. Trust God for your deliverance. In order to trust God when you're in trouble, you need to start trusting him before the trouble. Noah didn't get faith when the flood came. He had faith before the flood came. David didn't begin to trust God when he first saw Goliath. He had trust in God before he met Goliath. Daniel didn't begin to trust God when the decree was signed. He was already trusting in God. You can't wait to get in trouble to start trusting God. You have to develop a trust in God before the storm. Before the fingers get pointed, before you're called into the boss's office, before the certified letter comes, before the test results come back, before you go into the interview, 
What you going to do when you in trouble? I'm going to trust God for deliverance. Daniel was praying before the law was passed. Daniel was praying before he got in trouble. Daniel was trusting God before he got in trouble. And it showed when the trouble came. Then the third thing you need to do is stand with God. Before the trouble comes. If you want God to be there when you get in trouble, you ought to be with him before the trouble comes. Stand with him now and he'll stand with you then. When you get in trouble, you want somebody who can do something about it. And when my trouble comes, I want the Lord on my side. I don't know what he'll do, but I know he'll do something. He might end my troubles. He might strengthen me while I'm in the trouble. He might comfort me while I'm in the trouble. I might get some peace. I might get some guidance. I might begin to focus on somebody else and not being so pitiful on my own self. I might be able to encourage somebody. I don't know what God's going to do, but I know he's going to do something. He might just make me not afraid. Every Lord's Day, we quote the first three verses of Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all time. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul maketh a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. But you know what the next verse says? Verse 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. That's a great, great Great statement. I want, the, I want the Lord to deliver me from the forces around me that, that seek to attack me and do me harm. I want him to deliver me from COVID. I want him to deliver me from crime. I want him to deliver me from, from racism because these forces are intent on bringing me down. I also want him to deliver me from my foes. Those who mean me no good. Those who attack my character. Those who scandalize my name. Those who want to do me harm. I want him to deliver me from mean people. And folk that say bad things about me. I want him to deliver me from the forces. I want him to deliver me from my foes. But more than that, I want him to deliver me from my fears. Fear is what makes our problems seem larger than they really are. Fear makes us anxious even before the event. Fear makes us lose focus on the problem solver and start focusing on the problem. David blesses God for delivering him from his fears. A bully only has power from your fear. But when you're not afraid of him anymore, he has no more power. And so I want God to deliver me also from my fears. So before the trouble comes, you need to have a game plan. Pray before it came, comes. And you can pray while you're in it. Trust in his deliverance before the trouble. And you can look for it while you're in the trouble. Stand with him before the trouble and know that he will stand with you when the trouble comes. Somebody say, ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you, and he will carry you through. One thing for sure, whether he takes it away or whether he doesn't, whether he comforts me or whether he doesn't, whether he strengthens me or whether he doesn't, I know that he can. And because I know that he can, when my troubles come, I'm going to bless him. I'm going to thank him. I'm going to praise him when my troubles come. I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to testify of him. I'm going to honor him when my trouble comes. In my trouble, I'm going to call on him. I'm going to lean on him. I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to wait on him. I'm going to talk to him. And whatever comes, I'm going to praise him. What you going to do when you're in trouble? We know it's coming. We've lived long enough to know that the trouble we had was not our last trouble. We live long enough to know that you don't have to be wrong 
for trouble to enter into your existence. So you need to get ready. What you going to do when trouble comes? When you have an emergency, you know the number to call. When you got to go to the hospital, you know the card to present. When you have to, when your car is spinning out of control, you know what pedal to mash on. You need to prepare for when trouble is coming. Because it's coming. Somebody out there this morning has not aligned themselves with the Christ of Calvary. Somebody out there this morning has not been baptized for the forgiveness of their sin. They want to stand with God, but you're not connected. And so you need to be baptized into Christ. Put on Christ. Become one of his children. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, if you're willing to repent of your sins and confess him as the savior of the world, then we'll baptize you for the forgiveness of your sins. COVID or no COVID, you still need to be baptized. If that's your desire. Just let us know. Our number's on the screen. Give us a call and we'll arrange to meet you so that you too can be added to the body of Christ. Stand with the Lord in the church of his son, Jesus. It's always a prayer is that you'll be careful and that you'll be prayerful. take this time every Lord's Day to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross. He came from glory to die for our sins. He gave his life, took abuse, took the whips, took the scars, shed his precious blood for the sins of the world. And Jesus asks, he commands, that as often as we do this, that we do it not out of tradition, not out of habit, but in remembrance of him. At this time, let us go to God in prayer on behalf of the bread and the cup. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for blessing us. We thank you for loving us enough to give your son Jesus to die for our sins. Lord God, we pray that you will please bless us as we partake of this bread and this cup. Help us to do it in a way that will be pleasing before thee, that you might get all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me now take the bread.
and now the cup. This time we also set aside a moment for you to make your collection, make your offering unto God. The Lord still requires the tenth of all that we receive. And in these difficult times, we know that may cause some to be a little bit anxious, but understand this, God is still in the blessing business. There are three ways that you can make your contribution. Once you may go online, make your contribution electronically on our website, click on the online giving button and make your contribution that way. Secondly, you may mail it, put it in the mail and send it to the church. Once we receive it, we will record it uh, and you will get the credit for that collection. And then finally, you can either come and join us in the building as we worship on the Lord's Day, or you can drop it by anytime during the week and we will put it in the collection basket for you. But we know God loves a cheerful giver. And I know that we're thankful for all that he has blessed us with thus far. God bless you. I come to worship God today. I will speak and I'll sing His praise. I will magnify the Lord forever. Let's exalt His name to 